Who would win in a fight, Jamie Lannister or Aragorn? I normally stay away from this kind of debate because they are clearly from different worlds and we can never truly know the answer, but as George R. R. Martin himself has waded into the argument, let's do it. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. On this channel we cover The Lord of the Rings, A Song of Ice and Fire, The Witcher and more. If you like the sound of that, feel free to hunt around your screen for the subscribe button. I know it's there somewhere, I'm just not sure where. Who would win in a fight between Aragorn and Jamie Lannister? George R. R. Martin was asked this question directly at a Worldcon over a decade ago and seemed to treat it as a serious inquiry. He thought for a moment, stroked his beard, let the questioner clarify that it was about when both were at the top of their powers, and then said, I think Jamie would probably take Aragorn, especially if he was allowed to be armoured. After which he proceeded to talk passionately for a couple of minutes about the advantages of wearing armour in medieval combat. Armour was invented for a reason. It's good to wear armour if you're fighting with sharp pieces of metal. The argument is slightly more nuanced than that, but you get the idea. Is he right? Would Jamie probably beat Aragorn? Well, George R. R. Martin was clearly answering off the cuff, having not really thought about it before, but we can dig deep into the lore of both worlds. First, the ground rules. Let's stick to the idea of them both being at the peak of their powers. Jamie still has two hands, for example, and they both have their best equipment. George R. R. Martin seemed in his answer to be assuming that Jamie would be wearing armour and Aragorn not, but let's come back to that point in a bit. First, let's tackle the idea of who is the better fighter irrespective of any equipment they may have. Taking Jamie first, he is clearly a very strong fighter. Jamie himself thinks there was at least one fighter greater than him, Arthur Dane, but beyond that his arrogance probably isn't the best starting point for any self-assessment. Instead, let's see what others think. Barristan Selmy, who does know a thing or two about fighting, thinks this when assessing another fighter's ability. The best natural swordsman Selmy had seen since Jamie Lannister. Which, although it means that there are potential equals to Jamie out there, is still quite a compliment to him, because Barristan first saw Jamie fight nearly two decades earlier, and since then will have seen the finest fighters in Westeros and many in Essos, and in all that time he had not seen any as naturally talented as Jamie. This judgement is backed up by the evidence we see in the books. To start with, Jamie was clearly very good at jousting. He had won several tourneys, though was perhaps outmatched by Loras and the Cleganes later on in his career. In real combat, though, he seems another level. He doesn't fight Ned in the books, but he does have that duel with Brienne while he was manacled and not in the best condition after his imprisonment. He lost, or at least looked like he was about to lose when the fight was stopped, but Brienne remembers it this way. Brienne remembered her fight with Jamie Lannister in the woods. It had been all that she could do to keep his blade at bay. He was weak from his imprisonment and chained at the wrists. No knight in the Seven Kingdoms could have stood against him at his full strength with no chains to hamper him. Earlier, during the Battle of the Whispering Wood, he took out several northerners while attempting to get to Rob. It took a whole mob of people to finally bring him down. His capture is treated not just as politically important, but a massive blow to the Lannister war effort. All of which tells us that Jaime, at the height of his powers, was one of, if not the, greatest fighter in Westeros. So what about Aragorn? Well, the problem we have with Tolkien in this regard is that he rarely likes to focus on the details of battles, and crude comparisons about who was the best fighter are not really his style, so we have less evidence to go on than we might expect. But what we do know is impressive. He emerges from the Battle of the Pelennor Fields without even a scratch, despite being in the middle of the action. There's a similar tale at Helm's Deep, where we see him take part in valorous deed after valorous deed, taking out the battering ram with Aemir, single-handedly preventing an incursion, riding forth into the massed ranks of the enemy with Theoden. Aragorn doesn't take a part in Gimli and Legolas's little game of how many orcs did you kill, but he was a force to be reckoned with in that battle. And there is one more thing to note about Aragorn. Jaime is a human in a human world, and most of his opponents are human too, at least so far in the story. 
But Middle-earth is a more diverse world, and some of the opponents Aragorn faces are decidedly more deadly than normal humans. It would be remiss, for example, to talk about Aragorn's fighting abilities without noting that time he beat back five Nazgul, pretty much on his own at Weathertop. And equally important, Aragorn is not a normal human himself. He is descended from Numenorean kings. There is elf blood and even some Maya blood in his ancestry, which makes him longer lived. He is 87 at the time of the Lord of the Rings, so way more experienced than Jaime, while retaining the vigour and strength of youth. He has healing powers and a strength of mind that he can project to make even some of the strongest of opponents flee before him. For example, in the books, the mouth of Sauron quails and falls back when Aragorn simply locks eyes with him. So, on their own merits, both Jaime and Aragorn are clearly among the greatest fighters in their own worlds. Jaime is probably more clearly great compared to his peers. Both Barristan and Brienne say in their own ways that he is the greatest in his generation. But Aragorn simply isn't Jaime's peer. He's something else entirely. Jaime gets some flattering write-ups, but this is how Tolkien described Aragorn. Tall as the sea kings of old, he stood above all that were near. Ancient of days, he seemed, and yet in the flower of manhood, and wisdom sat upon his brow, and strength and healing were in his hands, and a light was about him. But George R. R. Martin's view that Jamie would win was not just based on their relative abilities in combat, it was also based on Jamie wearing armour. Now, obviously armour in medieval-style combat is as important as George R. R. Martin says it is, and Peak Jamie was clearly excellent at fighting in armour, which is a skill in itself. But as we noted earlier, there's no reason why Aragorn couldn't also wear armour. Yes, as a ranger he was more about the leathers and manoeuvrability, but when he got into a battle proper and had the opportunity to armour himself, he did. At the Battle of Helm's Deep, we're told that Aragorn was arrayed in shining mail, with a helmet and a round shield, and he seems to use it all pretty effectively, to say the least. So I don't think that having armour would make much of a difference between the two. What about swords? For most of his life, Jaime had a well-made but normal sword. He was given Oathkeeper, the Valyrian steel sword, by his father, but gave it away straight away to Brienne, and he only ever had it during his one-handed era. But let's let him have it anyway for this battle with Aragorn. Valyrian steel is strong and light and sharp, and forged by magic. It undoubtedly gives its owner an edge in combat. In the other corner, Aragorn will of course be wielding Anduril, the sword that was broken and reforged. And although Tolkien's soft magic system means that we don't have a list of powers for it, it certainly seems exceptionally sharp and effective, and Galadriel gave him a sheath for it that meant that it could not be stained or broken. At least a match for Valyrian steel, in other words. So let's pull all of this together. Is George R. R. Martin right? Would Jamie beat Aragorn in a one-on-one -on -one fight? I think it would be close and remembered in song for the ages, but no, Jamie would not win. At his peak, he would against pretty much everyone in Westeros, and I'm sure against the vast majority of humans in Middle-earth, but against Aragorn, descendant of Numenorean kings with powers far above normal sword fighting, who can make even mighty opponents quail with one look, and wielding Anduril, the most powerful and storied blade in Middle-earth? No. Do you agree? Or do you think that Jaime would win? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like more videos digging deep into The Lord of the Rings or A Song of Ice and Fire, there are some playlists appearing now for you to dive into. Or if you'd like to support this channel, the best way to do that is through Patreon. There's a link to that appearing now on the right of your screen. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.